Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comdarchi Podcast Season 4. Saison 4 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et And maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. It's good to meet you again in Comme d'Archi, season 4, episode 60. We approach here through a portrait of Emily Rose, written by the Maison de Portrait Trafalgar, the question of the narrative that of the life of Emily, certainly, but also that of the many projects which are entrusted to her as an interior designer. Whether they are existing volumes or about to come into existence, buildings have always been able to dialogue with Emily Rose. Her penchant for marked atmospheres and sharp associations now invests these palaces that the interior designer rethinks at all levels, these spaces that she designs starting with a few pen strokes. Picking up a triviality from the archives of a luxury hotel, amplifying it to create a setting in the colors of the 1920s, paying subtle homage to the origins of a great pastry chef by replicating, within his store, shapes reminiscent of Ethiopian rock churches, transforming a soulless dry cleaner into an upscale bakery, the founder of the Eros Agency revises places by connecting them to a context, swarming with details that are so many subjects. By respecting the coherence of a fundamental narrative, Emily translates it into architectural language. Each project then becomes a bearer of meaning and symbolism, of a story that is invented, reappropriated and told. On the shores of Annecy, an emblematic establishment can invite you to fully immerse yourself in all the facets of the lake. Colors and materials take on light as the floors go up, like a gentle rise to the surface. Stylized fish scales appear in iridescent decorative elements, and hence a headboard discreetly gives shape to a mirror. Behind this intractable requirement and these millimeter plans traced with a 0.7 pencil, it is a whole universe that unfolds. A universe where refinement is combined with the audacity of a candy vision, with the carelessness of believing that the world always turns round. For, in Emily's eyes, Elegance can very well be enjoyed under pink or solar neon lights and sophistication born of a floral motif or a musical. I am not afraid to say that Eros's creations are there to give you butterflies in your stomach. I want the experience of the place and the emotion it provides to be remembered, for those who enter it to remember less of what they saw than what they experienced. To reveal the beauty of interiors, Emily Rose did not wait to launch herself under the nickname given by her father on a certain Christmas Eve. First, there was that child's room, a thousand times rearranged, decorated by mechanos that she assembled to the bolt, at the time when she still carefully followed the rules and the manual. Then there were more delirious attempts when the schoolgirl tried her hand at some collages, rearranging the smallest piece of wall with fashion or perfume posters. If her vocation was anchored at a very young age, and if interior design was still appealing to her once she had graduated from high school, Emily took a completely different path. She submitted to her family's judgment of a glittering profession before embracing this activity in which she expresses her full range of talents. The communication studies will play the game of the good compromise by reserving a place to the artistic outpourings. And since thwarted desires have a way of finding their way out of the window, Emily began her career in a large architectural firm. She then returned to her Savoyard cocoon by joining Patriarche as a communications officer. Unconsciously, I hadn't given up my dream. In 12 years, the young woman has traced a trajectory much less rectilinear than her coach, an architect scale. Starting with graphic design and other glossy creations, it took a click for Emily to dare. Her aspirations were reactivated by seeing her architect colleague's desk, on which textiles and materials were piled up. I wanted to touch everything. When I saw her going to construction site with her suitcase full of samples, it brought me back to what I really wanted to do. 
In parallel to her work, she eventually embarked on a new specialized training program in Switzerland and was able to rely on her perseverance as much as on patriarch to establish herself between two shores, two time frames. When I left the agency, I went to the Athenium School of Design. I had professors who confirmed who I was supposed to be. They taught me a lot and gave me a taste for architectural history as much as for hand drawing. Just as her curiosity inspired her to take up watercolor, work with leather or spray paint walls, just as she moved a few strokes away from a career in rowing and pushed her love of tango to the point of becoming a pro, just as she accumulates passions to the point of taking up several instruments, it is with the same ardor that the tireless one went through her three years curriculum and garnered an award for excellence. From projects to inaugurations, the beginnings in the profession immediately saw the architect refine her signature and launch her agency in Lyon by making the luxury hotel industry her trademark. Because her candor cannot prevent her ambition, Emily's first projects speak for themselves. In addition to her collaboration with the Hôtelier Jean-Claude Lavorel, Le Chabichou, Le Grand Hôtel de Courchevel and Les Suites de la Potinière, Emily has worked with the retail and restaurant sectors, as well as with large-scale references such as new Périport Airbus and Ligne Rosé, which called on the architect to design its stand at the Equipe Hotel trade show. The installation was imprinted on more than one retina by placing four distinct universes under a dome where everything was thought out, right down to the olfactory identity. The curtains fell in a gradation of shades, offering a welcome poetic pose in the hustle and bustle of this event. A success that resonates with this intention to focus part of the agency's activity on high-flying scenography. To support its growth, Eros surrounds itself with a circle of trusted partners. To give shape to these colorful and enveloping atmospheres of which Emily cultivates the secret, upholsterers, plastic artists, mosaicists, cabinet makers, iron workers, weavers and flower artisans all contribute to the artistic process. For a good scenario, you necessarily need the right protagonists. With her team, the architect summons creative freedom and demonstrates that taste for collective effort that allows the agency to carry out large-scale renovations. Thanks to the project management skills of her husband, Arnaud, Emily follows the progress of the projects from the model to the groundbreaking. This in-house management of the work allows us to respect the integrity of an ID that has been conceived, designed and validated. With a yoga teacher's diploma, Emily masters interiors as well as interiority. And in each of her creations, the notions of balance and alignment intrude through a play of light, a mosaic of flowers, or the reinterpretation of what nature offers in the most spectacular way. The cachet of a piece sometimes lies in the way we reinterpret the meanings from which we extract certain specificities. If lunches on construction sites and readjustments of plans also punctuate her days, the character of an atmosphere owes less to the mathematical reliability than to the power of an emotion, of a tree-like imagination. Thus, Emily begins each project with a phase of rambling that sees her sailing from works of art to works of art, from flashes to sketches, or simply exploring the folds of her memory. She can then draw the thread of these trips to take her to Asia in a Robinson mode, discovering the local gastronomy and the Tatai River. She also remembers one of the entrance doors that she cannot refrain from photographing out of a whimsy, her multiple renderings in the open-air design show that is Amsterdam, or the performance of a pianist in a Gallo-Roman amphitheater that brought tears to her eyes. She is also sure that this inspiration is nestled in the smell of a rhubarb pie, in the beauty of a dahlia that has just come out of its dormant sea, in the panache of Sidonie, this operetta character who loves in silence, under the brush of Chagall and the dreamlike quality of his paintings, in the harmony of a can of Formentera, the wild island that the architect has in his skin. It is by unfolding the range of her sensibilities that Emily Rose instills her style, this desire to make every place a place where one feels happy. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kamdashi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Robourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.